Can you picture a target superimposed on the Middle East? The bullseye is over Jerusalem. That shouldn't be hard to do in today's political climate. If you pronounce the book as Ames, you'll remember the subject of this prophecy. A herdsman from Tekoa, just two miles from Bethlehem and four miles south of Jerusalem, Amos, whose name means burden, lived only a score of miles from the border between his native Judah and Israel with its capital Samaria. Imagine the chagrin for the northern tribes to have a lowly gatherer of sycamore fruit to prophesy to them. But Amos remonstrates with King Amaziah that it certainly wasn't his decision to be a preacher. He says, I was no prophet, nor was I the son of a prophet, but was a sheep breeder and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. If Israel had a problem with the message Amos delivered, they ought to take up their concern with the God who sent him. This, by the way, is good to remember when people object to our witnessing in the gospel. You'll have to take it up with Jesus, we might reply graciously. This was his idea. Amos prophesies about the wickedness of eight countries in the territory along the eastern shore of the Mediterranean Sea, called the Levant. The first arrow he aims is to the northeast at Damascus, capital of Syria. The next flies southwest to Gaza, land of the Philistines. Then northwest to Tyre in Lebanon, followed by Edom and Ammon to the southeast. Each has a different charge leveled at them for their specific sins. But how shocked the Israelites might have been when after pronouncing woes on these six Gentile nations around them, Amos concludes with aiming at Israel and Judah. How important this is. God doesn't have two sets of rules, one for his children and another for everyone else. God brought judgment on Canaan at the hands of his people because the Canaanite sin had gone beyond repair. So when Israel and Judah reached the same stage of corruption, God used Assyria and Babylon to bring judgment on them. Like a great bell tolling, the sentences ring out for three transgressions and for four, a figure of speech describing the overflow of their iniquity. Chapters 3 through 6 give a series of sermons, and chapters 7 through 9 a series of visions. The threats of impending doom are interspersed with five calls to seek the Lord, concluding with God's promise to bring full restoration in the end of chapter 9. These are the only hopeful verses in the whole book, but what a day that will be when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed, the mountain shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. And that's our scripture snapshot of the prophecy of Amos.